Hello everyone. Today we are going to study on water tanks. So in this we are going to uh, have some introduction and in next videos we will be studying on design problems. So water tanks are reinforced concrete structure used to store water. It can be underground, on the ground or overhead. So this is example of overhead water tank. You can see the plan can be circular or rectangular this water tank uh, is circular example and this is inch tank I've given. So if you see these are four you can see so this is a ring beam that means two circular type beam. This is the dome shape so top dome this is the bottom dome and this is the cylindrical vertical wall we say we can use stairs for the axis then these are the columns which is called a staging and then foundation this I have shown as ground these are the beams and these are the columns for supporting this water tank and there is a ventilator this is for air circulation in case of inch tank it's same but you can see the difference is here after till this this is like a circular tank but here extra one conical uh, slab is given and then the bottom dome okay so this is the difference but we will just Studying later why such is planned. In design, you can assume dome thickness from 75 to 150 mm and rise for dome, rise in the sense is this height. Okay, so this height, this is one fourth to one sixth of span. An overhead tank is supported by columns called as staging. For the design requirements, so we should. Think two points one is strength another is impermeability because this is a water tank we don't want it to leak that's why it should be it should have water tightness so for this you should have less water cement ratio and there should not be any cracks so to prevent the shrinkage cracks in concrete we should adopt minimum distribution reinforcement of 0.3 percent of wall area and we are providing contraction joints between adjacent slabs expansion joints to accommodate thermal expansion so in IAS 3370 part 1 we have figure 1 2 3 that uh, shows this joints different types so this IAS 3370 is for water tank they have different parts again we'll be discussing on that also so coming to those joints which we have one is typical contraction joints so this you can see if this is the uh, portion of tank uh, vertical wall you can see any portion you can see so this is called as water bath and this if this is not continuous okay so there is a water bath to continue this to elements okay and there you can have some joint sealant compound because there is a gap for that you can also have some strip painting okay these are different types of joints so there is a continuity of steel but here it is not continuous so we have provided water bar next is expansion joints so all these figures are given in is 3370 part 1 so again you can see you can also have temporary joints or so initially you can have some gap then you can fill it with the sealants okay these are joint fillers then this is for sliding joints if you want some flexible uh, joints you can have sliding joints by having some rubber pad okay so is 3370 uh, 2000 is the latest version this includes the limit stress method previously we had only working stress method so this uh, no, is not for only water tank it is for all storage of liquids okay all types of like petrol or any other chemicals for all the storage of liquids and uh, this has been given in part one we have general requirements part two is for reinforced concrete structures uh, in this mostly they have referred is 456 like permissible stress the crack width uh, the materials site conditions now third is pre-stress concrete structure and fourth is the design tables they are given many coefficients which you have to refer for the design and this too the part three and four is same as the 1967 this too has been revised as 2009 we have another code is 11682 which gives design of rcc staging that means column design for overhead water tanks 
Now, so in part one, they have uh, discussed on uh, different materials in IS-456. So they have all given reference to IS to refer IS-456. So they have preferred that you should um, give M30. But if it is a smaller tank or small quantity, you can go for M25. And in this table one of uh, this part one, they have given the water cement ratio, minimum cement content. All this is given. Then they have given the design and detailing of joints, which we discussed just above. Causes and control of cracking can, this is also discussed, which can be loads, temperature or moisture. And the structure should be stable against overturning and sliding. In case of joints, we have movement joints, construction joints and temporary joints. In movement joints, it can be contraction, expansion or sliding. In construction joints, it is for continuity. Like you have casted today, other part you are going to cast tomorrow. So there is no continuous, right? So, so there is, you have to make a construction joint. Then temporary open joints you can have, which you can fill with sealants in future. So this movement joints is to accommodate relative movement between the parts and water tightness. The jointing material that we discussed now, this can be joint fillers, it can be water bars, or it can be joint sealants. So in joint fillers, it, these are the compressible sheets used as spacers to provide the gap in an expansion joint. Water bars, these are the impermeable strips wholly or partially embedded in concrete to span across the joints. And joint sealers, this can be like example asphalt, coal or bitumen. This provides watertight seal by addition to concrete. Okay. So in water bars, this can be like some iron sheets or can be rubbers to these elements. Then I have shown a deformation diagram. If you see, this is a circular water tank okay, of height edge. So you'll have a hydrostatic pressure, right? Because of water, the pressure in retaining walls and all you might have studied. So the rho g h, okay, this is well, like this pressure will happen. Deformation of shape of the wall shown if the joint at b so this b this is a joint between floor and the wall okay is flexible we, so or that is like sliding joint so if it is flexible you have the deformation shape is like this only but in black color has shown okay so i have written black also this is when the joint is flexible but in case of rigid or fixed no movement is possible at B. So here the deformation deflection would be zero. So this is how the deformation if it is a rigid joint. And if it is a flexible, you will have the deformation shape as this. Now a circular tank, this is I given a, an example of circular tank uh, with a ventilator and these are four ring beams. Oh no, it's a one. It's B1 and B2. It's all circular. In plan, if you see it's one circular beam. Okay. So it's one and this is another but if you see the cross section you can see like it will look like this okay so our circular tank with flat bottom if this bottom here in this case it's uh, it's dome shape if it is a flat bottom it's straight then it is uneconomical because more reinforcement will be there thickness will be more okay so domed shape domed bottom is provided so once domed bottoms provided this ring beams will resist the horizontal component of thrust from the domes okay and the thickness and the reinforcement also get reduced in this dome okay because you see you have uh, seen the arches are better than the straight uh, beams right Look, there is a horizontal component that's why so a similar concept has been used but here this uh, is like spherical shell element we say this dome is now if you see here this is the thrust so this is tx is hoop stress so it is all around horizontally and this is your shearing force ty downwards okay now but reinforcement in ring beam is heavy in this case now slab so in case of flat bottom the reinforcement was heavy in this bottom slab right so they provided a dome shape but for this this ring beam will be heavy okay you can also see the examples we have solved in later videos so 
this ring being will be heavy now in order to reduce this re heavy reinforcement what they plan they plan to have a conical dome or conical slab and then this bottom dome okay so this is called as insta so to reduce the diameter at its bottom is done by providing a conical dome this is this shape is called insta now this b2 will resist the difference between the inward and outward thrust from the bottom of the conical dome and bottom dome respectively okay which we'll be discussing here again so now b2 and b3 we have two beams ring beams okay so this there will be outward thrust <coughs> from this b2 is from top of the conical part the proportion of conical dome and bottom dome are so arranged that the outward thrust from bottom dome balances the inward thrust due to conical dome so this will balance which we can see here so this is the bottom dome and this is the conical slab from here t1 is the inward thrust and this t2 is the outward thrust so this will balance okay because this has again two horizontal and vertical components you can see this is the hoop stress if this is uh, the ring beam a circular shape so this is how the stress will be produced Now in design we have membrane analysis and others continuity effect at joints. You see this is the wall. This I have drawn the pressure distribution diagram. This is the hydrostatic pressure rho gh, and if this is the hoop tension, so this the hoop stress due to this Tx. Okay, so this will be uh, for fixed space in black I have shown. For hinged is the red color and sliding is the dotted one. Okay, so summation of this, this is the vertical bending moment diagram. Thank you for watching.